pillars of traditional uh, kupuna with generational knowledge and traditional knowledge on how we want to incorporate these things into the policies of today. So, and it all started for us was knowing that the chiefs are no longer get to govern, then we should be the ones to step up and bring the communities together and try to work it in a system where the community should be the ones making the recommendations to the state and not or state or the county and not where the county and the state says, oh, these are the rules that you gotta comply to. So this whole thing for us was how we wanna empower our people, yeah, to step up and take responsibility for ourselves when it came to the management of our mokos. And my wife, I don't know whether or not this would be nepotism, but is the ahamoku, representative for Lahaina. And we have some other people that's in the room that's also been instrumental with the creation of the Ahamoku. That's where Maui is. So Maui and Molokai, we, we kind of up there when it comes to policies and all these kinds of things and what the fiduciary duties of the state as well as the county is needs to be compliant now. I just want to be on terra farmer. Now I'm a political wreck. But I, I think I, I'm starting to see why it's important that we, we're in this little box. Because I know that I had to pass my range to my kids. So now my kids are acting like they're going to hit into my tarot patch. <laughs> but that's all good because it gives me time to make sure that I'm the one sharpening the spear because I know that if I don't do what I need to do, then I'm not going to get the water to my tarot patch. If I don't do what I need to do or what we need to do, that we know that we're not gonna have certain things that we need to deal with to protect the, the longevity of our ohana. And it's all about what we do now. It has a lot to do with the destiny of my children on their faith as pertaining to what they're gonna be tomorrow. So it's a sacrifice for us. I'm the lehua, yeah, I'm on the alana. And one thing about that in the spiritual realm, I look me down at everybody and I say, you pathetic fools, you guys gotta wake the hell up because somebody wants to steal your identity. But that's what the Ahamoku kinda did to me and my wahine over here. Made us uh, politically inclined and spiritually involved. I, I will share with you guys something and it was from her this whole impetus started with the Barrow Council on Maui. So we get this call saying that if EV have been washed up along the shores of Pumana, so they called the police department, the police went over there, they called SHP, they found there was two poho that were washed up on the, on the sand. They took one of the poho and they took it back to the office. Okay? So the next following, three days later, me and my wife had on hunch, you know, the day of the Barrow Council, we went down to Pumana and we started walking around and because of the decay from the sand and all that, and there was bones sticking out. So me and her just started gathering all the Ibi Kupuna from Pumana Beach Park. Put them in one eke. Then that was the day of the Barrow Council. And there's a law in there that says any barrels that are found is to be handed in the Department of Land and Natural Resources through SHPD. So we get this big box, there's about five, six different, you know, Ibi Kupuna in there, different parts. Yeah, we know there was two individuals. 
So early in the morning, me and her walking down the beach, I go on a reef, I find uh, part of the, the leg, yeah, part of the hip bone. So we put them in this, in this log hollow box, and we go to the girl council. Knowing that we have to hand this in, then she tells me these barrels don't belong with SHP because they're going to be taking them out of the mo. So she said, I don't want to leave this here. So I said, okay. We sat there and I said, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to say this. So I write one uh, motion. Then I went up. When it was our turn of inadvertent fines, it was going to bring up the issue about the skull that they found. Well, we had the out of body parts. So I went up to the borough council and I said, I'd like to entertain a motion for the borough council to recognize Ahamoko Maui Inc. and Naikani Maui Cultural Center as a repository to all inadvertent fines found in the Moku. The borough council was kind of like, ah. Uh, Oh, okay, okay. Uh, can you say that again? So I'd like to entertain a motion for the borough council to recognize us and goes, can we use, okay, we're going to use that language in the motion. And they read the motion and they said, all in favor? I. So we said, okay, mahalo, we took the bones, the, the ibi kupuna, we took them back to us. And it's still in our care at our center. And what oh, came about yes. that is the only way, because if the state and the county is responsible, it was found in a county park, the county and the state never made one move from the day that they found the poll. So now, get us, yeah, known as the repository to all these Ibi Kupuna, are still asking the state that the poll should be with us. But because they retrieved it, the poll is still in their care. So right now, it's good that we're working with the county and telling the county, this is where we want to put it. And the county says, okay. But if not for that, yeah, the county and the state would be in limbo and take care of other things besides what needs to be taken care of now. If we haven't stepped in to take ownership of that EV Kupuna and we, we started to understand, now we're telling the archeological teams on, on this island, every archeological company, here's my number, you know, when you're required to call a state, give us a call too. Because it's a race now. It's a race on time. Every time they find something, boom, we gotta be there before the state. Why? Because we're gonna claim them because now that the motion was made to acknowledge Ahamoko Maui as well as Naikani Maui as a repository, now our kuleana all of a sudden just will blow up. So we gotta be there every step of the moment. If not, if they retrieve them, and we don't know how long those Ivi Kupuna are going to be held hostage by the state. But we know that if it's from with us, then we, we know we can push the right buttons to make sure the re internment process going to be more sooner than being stuck with the county and the state when they start playing their political games. So that's the advantage. And what it, it, it helped us do is to form our own burial committee in Lahaina. And we're hoping that every moku, we have 12 mokus on Maui, also start forming their own burial community so we can start being the advantage of going out there and changing, or how we say flip the script. We gotta flip the script, which means that every moku should have a repository. The state, because we recognize you two and two, yeah, should also allow for each moku to have a repository yeah, not stuck in some office out of the MOPU, but within the MOPU as a repository or a resource area to all the different representatives on Maui, all 12 MOPUs. That's how we look at the long-range plan and how we can flip the script to make sure that it's a bottom-to-top management and not a top-to-bottom management. And also with the county's Pokua, now that we get the new regime, I don't know how the mayor is at this point, but I know we get good county council representatives in there, how to incorporate that so the county as well can step up to acknowledge the mokus in every district on a repository instead of this thing being stuck. And that's what the argument is. Why all of a sudden they can take claim to these things? The community where the mok the EV comes from should be the ones to malamaris, not the state. 
we should be the ones, the moku should be the one. I just wanted to add that. I have roots in moku keawe in Oahu, and on my father's side is very rooted in Maui. And I just like to say that I would marry one like me. This one like me. Yes, I, I just wanted to mention that. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's a little joke in our house, okay. Um, aloha my um, uilani. Aloha. What created this man is Kalawi Hawaii and Uncle Black Ho'ohuli. This is the reason why this man is the way he is today. Um, my experience with Ibi Kupuna has been passed down through my ohana. You know, we got a malama or kupuna. We go to our grave sites. We always take care of it. And, and you know, refreshing the flowers, kuka with them, have lunch, talk story. Um, and then came Mokapu. Mokapu was in my backyard because I'm from Kailua. Mokapu hit hard for me. Um, sleeping there with our kupuna. Having to take care and malama them and fight against an entity that is under a federal government level that has no respect for ibi kupuna. They need to do what they have to do and they're going to do it anyway. Um, that was my first experience. And my opening to a vision of Kuliana. Um, walking down Honolulu in 93 with a bunch of Hawaii, Kupaaina, Kanaka, anybody and everybody joined in. Walking into Iolani Palace. You know, that was my beginning. That was my opening to who we are and what we have to educate our next generation about. As a Vahine and a mother and a wife, we need to teach genealogy. It's important to know who we are, where we came from, and to pass it on. I wasn't raised with it, but I was past that, that kuleana. I wasn't ready for it, but who says when you're ready? You accept it, you go with it, and you malama it. My husband's family was gracious enough to open their hearts to me and teach me what they did. I was raised in the American society. You have to go to school, you have to get educated, you have to do all of that. But when I met my husband, it changed my whole life. My parents were against me marrying a Hawaiian. It was, they were against me learning the culture because they felt that it was a step back for us. My father is a Lyman, of course. It's the Lyman's vision. But my mother, on the other hand, raised me in that tradition, in secret. She instilled my kupuna in me by taking me to places like Sand Island, when they had the tearing down of all those people there, to Waimanalo, when Bumpy was there, and taking stand. She reminded me who I was no matter what. 
But when I met my husband and his family, it got deeper. And I knew that I had to respect my parent, my mother's side. She comes from Ka'u. Her, her lineage is from there. Her Wahana name is Kukui Hau Kamali'i. It's a Kani. Their family moved to Kahakulo. So when I moved to Maui, I felt comfortable there because it was beating. And now that I've opened and always did my police, always told that man upstairs that, you know, whatever avenue you have for me, allow me to walk it peacefully. And I praise you always, along with my kupuna. So when it comes to Evie, it is our responsibility. And it is nothing that is taken lightly because they were not asked to be dug up. Their pulleys were set when they were put and placed where they wanted to be placed. And I believe that. And when you disturb them, expect a lot back, which is happening in our universe today. We feel it, we walk it, we know it. The laws that are set in place are things that within Ahomoku, we are trying to change certain things. We have meetings. It's something that we all need collectively to do, to understand and how we can move forward to change and protect them. And I just wanted to mahalo all of this because it needs to be told, it needs to be said, it needs to be shared. And the more education that we have, the more people understand. And to be here in front of you know, these, these awesome people that I look up to and, and everything that I listened to and I've watched and seen their footsteps and where they walked. I mahalo them for opening it up for us. <laughs>